Oh, good morning, afternoon, evening again, Soldiers on Fire for Christ, my family and social media. I am Pastor Teresa Vini. I will be the instructor for tonight's Bible study session. Jesus, thank you. Again, thank you for those that have messaged me, praise God, and hopefully you can join us. But if not, uh, I am grateful for those that will be viewing this video later. And uh, I just thank you and I love you. So now I'm here. I'm going to give you some more tools. Uh, God is ready. I am ready. But first, we're going to just right, we're going to just open our spirits up. I have one praise and worship song that I want you to listen to so you can, you know, shake off some any residue of anything of today or anything you've heard or some of you may have been having conversations, so you got to, you know, clean your ears out, clean your eyes out. Amen. And some of us probably slipped up and said some things, so you got to clean your mouth up. So, and with that being said, enjoy the praise and worship music. Get still before the Lord. Prepare your spirits. I do not own any rights to any music that will be coming forth. Again, I do not own any rights to any music that will be coming forth. I do not own any rights to any music that will be coming forth. Amen. Again, those of you coming in, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those that will view it later, thank you. And please join us here at Soldiers on Fire for Christ for our meet and greet every fourth and fifth um, Tuesday of the month so that you can meet the leadership team. You know, I, 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 I employ that because y'all need to know and to discern true women and men of God. Some of you don't discern rightly. So, I always pray for the Holy Spirit to get into your spirits out there so they can open your eyes up so you can see that there are still many of us still here. God has still has many leaders here mm -hmm. on earth in many states. Amen. So let's listen to this praise and worship song real quick. When you come in, please mute all your mute your mics for no background feedback noise. And we will begin shortly. Amen. After the praise and worship song, I will come back, open us up in prayer, and we're going to get right into Bible study. Amen. Let me try from the beginning. I do not own any rights to any music that will be coming forth. That's right. We're on holy ground. Bible study. Jesus, 
That's the song right there. I need it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes all you need to say is hallelujah. Good eve, good morning, afternoon, evening again, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm Pastor Teresa Vini. I am the instructor for Soldiers on Fire for Christ Saturday night Bible study sesh. And so before we begin, I op- I'm going to open us up in prayer. Again, I say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me, giving up your time, joining me and the leadership team. And for those that are coming in or hopefully will be joining, you know, we really appreciate and love you with all the love of Christ. But again, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you again this day with my Soldiers on Fire for Christ family and social media, those that will be viewing this recording later and those that will try to come in. Hopefully they will be able to join us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you for their lives and I thank you for it abundantly. I thank you for waking us up, Lord God, giving us this day our daily bread. Continue to create in us a clean heart, oh God, and continue to renew in us a right spirit. Lord, thank you for this time as you preparing me, Lord, to be an encouragement and to give your people what we have spoken about. And so we thank you that they will be able to use this tool. I thank you in advance that you, Holy Spirit, will prick their conscience and interpretation of your word so that they can apply it rightly to the areas that they may be weakened or they need to be strengthened more or to, you know, go to the next level on, Lord God, and they be, you know, strong in and they won't be deceived or they won't, you know, just keep falling into the traps of the enemy. So, Lord, have your way. Come and sit with us now. Holy Spirit, you lead, I shall follow. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart always be acceptable in your sight, because you are my strength and my redeemer. Bless everyone here, Lord God, their households, Lord God. Bless them in the areas of their spiritual growth that they are at, Lord God. Continue to let them grow. Continue to let them prosper, Lord God. Continue to let them just transform and be all what you created them to be. 
We love you and we honor you. We respect you and we just thank you. And we give you all the glory and honor for it right now in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. And everyone say amen. 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 Get out your Bibles. Amen. Devices. Go with me to the book of Galatians. Let me get it up as always. Where are we at? Let me just try to pull my notes. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to read it to y'all. That's the only scripture we're going to kind of home in tonight, so y'all can have it up for a while to refer back to. Galatians chapter 6, verse yeah. 1 through 10. And the topic for tonight, my class topic is, will God allow you to face more than you can handle? But the subtopic, what we're going to be, the Holy Spirit is going to want to home in on and us to focus on is, will you allow others to face more than they can handle? Amen. Subtopic, will you allow others to face more than they can handle? Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10, the Amplified Version says, dealing with bearing others' burdens. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Carry one another's burden, and in this way you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. Verse 3. For if anyone thinks he is something special when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. And then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to, to another. For every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. Verse 6 the one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treated with contempt, nor allow his percepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man mm -hmm. sows, this and this only is what he will mm -hmm. reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. Last verse. So then. While we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith born again believers. Praise the Lord. Let the word of the Lord be blessed. And let all his spirit flow upon it and just bless everyone, all the hearers and the doers of his word. I put into your hearing Galatians chapter six, verses one to one through 10. We're going to home in on that. Our class topic is, will God allow you to face more than you can bear? But today our subtopic we're going to talk about is, will you allow others to face more than you can, uh, more than they can handle? Only, and I want you to listen to this as well. Only in the book of Galatians does Paul fall to affirm anything or anyone as he begins his letter. God speaks through Paul and calls the Galatians back to the original gospel. 
Like the words of an Old Testament prophet, Paul's words cut deep with truth at the very point of his readers' need. People naturally tend to think they must earn God's approval. Something inside of us feels drawn to achieve. We like to merit what we possess like a trophy. But God knows the downfall of that empty theology. First, no one is good enough to meet the merit of heaven. Second, our own labor and leadership grow stronger when we cannot earn it because grace, not guilt, is our motivation. Love, not law, drives us to act. Leaders who live in an environment of grace always obtain superior results. So the points I want you to ponder on is number one, integrity builds trust and trust builds relationship. Number two, effective leaders aren't afraid to confront when necessary. And number three, spiritual leaders lead from the inside out. Will you allow others to face more than they can handle? What does Paul mean in verse one when he says, you who are spiritual? Y'all got your Bibles, you got the scripture right there, that little phrase right there in verse one. What does he mean by that when he says, you who are spiritual? On everybody ring the party bell at once. Okay. Honestly, well, I can't I can't push the button, but I'm getting out of it that uh when you're dealing with someone and your spirit, you gotta handle them gently. Be gentle, but and this is my opinion, I ain't gonna but gently and be firm, cautious, but be honest, you know, in your deliveries, you know, but you gotta, just be mindful. When we when we're dealing with individuals and we're dealing with them in the spirit, you know. It, in other words, you want to deliver your, the word in kindness, but don't be boastful in your words, you know. And with with boastfulness is more of a intimidation when you deliver in a word. Don't be all the other words. Don't be feeling yourself when you're trying to um, be be spiritual and talk to someone and you know and, and uplift them. And um, that's why that's why I take out. But I just I can explain that right then. I could I drop everything. <laughs> Okay. Give it I don't up. know which one went up first, Minister Rose or Elder Bud. Minister Rose. Okay. Elder Bud said he can see to you. You're on mute. Uh, Think about that. But for those that are spiritual, are those that know the Word of God and that are you know living according to the Word of God. Yeah, but that's what I believe. You know, those that have found Christ and and is trusting in the Word. Amen. Elder Bud. No, okay, it's open. Um, so what did Paul mean, Elder Bud, when he said in verse one, he said, "Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual." What did he mean by when he said you who are spiritual? Well, he's talking about the people that say they're believers and um, they're going to make sure they examine themselves. That's what I was thinking when it came to that, Paul, mm -hmm. about Paul, because Paul always said he examined himself daily. That means not once a week when you go to church or anything, but to examine yourself daily and to stay humble, be humility. You know, you can do things with humility and let people know that you don't know all the answers, but I do know the yeah. one that does. That's all I could say. Amen. 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 That's so. I, I can't push this. Well, mm, oh, go ahead, um, Minister Isaiah. You have something to add? Yeah, that's no, no. Just pretty much, um, brother, but put it the way I was trying to was trying to say it. You know, be spiritual, <laughs> be gentle, and examine yourself. The word examine mm -hmm. yourself, what I mean when, I, when I'm saying about being boastful of yourself and being prideful when you're trying to speak to somebody in the spirit you know, of a leader and be using God, you speaking God's word. When I say boastful, I kind of mean, don't be boastful. I kind of mean, you got examining yourself also, you know. So, what Brother Bud was pretty much where I was trying to go with that. Amen. Amen. 
So what attitude should you have when correcting others? Back, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give that to you because I'm coming behind you. So answer that right from the spirit, um, Minister Isaiah. So what attitude should you have when correcting others? I said a kind and gentle attitude. First of all, correcting others, mainly because um, if you first of all, when you are when you correcting somebody, a lot of times they're under defensive anyway. So mm -hmm. you gotta be mindful, so you gotta know how to speak to them. So you gotta start kind of be kind of gentle, you know, so you get to your point. Because they are, if you correct them, not not sin. If you correct an individual, and they listen to you, they on the defense in the first place. So you gotta be mindful and be gentle, you know, with that. Amen. Amen, Elder Bud. What attitude mm -hmm. should you have when correcting others? I'd like to pass it over to Apostle Taboo because I tried to get him and it was a heck of a mess. So he's on our screen tonight. I'd like him to share. Let me see. We, I think he put something in the chat. Oh. Yeah, we've talked many times. Oh, you can't be volunteering people in class and then no <laughs> raise his right. hand out the bus. <laughs> oh, Apostle Tabo put it in the <laughs> chat. He said, those who are still alive and are living in the truth of the gospel. Mm. Um, well, I agree, but my question, okay, I don't know what you just answered, Apostle Tabo. The question is, what attitude should you have when correcting others? Kingdom grace and glory to God. It's good to be here again. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, thank Jesus. Okay, before I go further, let me just attend to the question uh, according to the level of the light I uh i thought in the scripture and which we are trying and trusting god not try not try but trusting god to 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 be the light of god to be that very light okay the attitude okay. we should put on when we are correcting others uh is still, is still the same attitude we should put on when we are being corrected and that is humility mm -hmm. humility same thing, okay. giving it out and receiving it, it is humility. It takes an humble heart to receive correction. It takes an humble heart to give out. So when we are rooted in the truth, the truth of the Lord must be, must be shared in love. And that is an act of humility. The ability to see that others are in need of these things, okay? And the ability to know that, okay, I'm wrong. I need this thing. Of course, everybody know. Everybody know. And that is why the devil, uh, the Bible uh, put an attribute, uh, a proud attribute to the devil because he knew something that needs to be done, but he's not just doing it. So that is what we call rebellion. It's intentional. So I know when I'm wrong. We know when we are wrong. So when I'm being corrected, humility. And when I'm giving it out to humility, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, um, Apostle Tybo. Good answer. Good answer. All right, uh, the bud back to you. Okie dokie, since I turned it over to him. I think yes, you're like mountain people. This ain't no class. No, Go on, the bud. Well, Paul said we talked about examining ourselves. And like I said, you got to be humility because if you're not in humility, you're going to think, well, I, I, you know, these people, well, I'm glad you, you know, they were happy about, you know, his truth. But the whole idea is to realize that not everything's about him, you know, because he said, I have to look at myself daily to see that I'm not tripping up, you know, and I'm causing somebody to stumble, right? Something like that. Exam that's a deep examination. I mean, to really take time to think about you and how you are with the relationship with God, you know, is going to make a difference in how you are. You know, it's like I said, I don't really know all the answers, but I know that the word of God says what, you know, it says, you know, I'm just learning from God, you know, what he says. But very much humility is very important. And I got that from brother. I, I just. It's so real. I've become a lot more humble because of that, those messages, you know, and we got to be careful because a lot of people feel like, well, you're stepping on my toes. 
But we're letting you know that the truth says it's not what I say, but it's what God says. Amen. Amen. I think that's right. I'm not sure. You, Apostle Tybo, if you'd like to add something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something came to my mind that I I just need to balance it too. When I talk about, when I mentioned humility. Okay, when we are looking at humility, First of all, humility among men, among ourselves. But the most important, uh, the most important part of the humility uh, is being obedient and yielded to God. Okay, why did I say so? We saw how many times Jesus Christ had to rebook the Pharisees. Now he need to be obedient to the vision. He need to be obedient to the vision. It was at, at, at some point, it was very sharp, sharp correction. <laughs> so, and uh, the same thing to the apostles, uh, they had to rebook. Okay, for instance, Paul gave a rebook, open rebook, open rebook, public rebook to, uh, rebook to Peter. People were there and he has to correct that. Now, he is being obedient to the heavenly vision, and that is very much important. Very much important. So, uh, we also add to this to be in uh, obed- uh, in humility to respond or to correct people and to receive correction. We have to be in the spirit, we have to be obedient to the gospel. We have to be, Paul was in the spirit and glory to God. Peter received that correction. It was not easy. No flesh can collect that. It was very sharp. So being in the spirit with us, we help us to receive whatsoever is coming, no matter how it's coming. I shared this several times uh, many years ago. Um, I, I had to correct my junior brother and the way i corrected him was not too good i shouted at him and uh it didn't go well with him (laughs) so we were going to the place of uh that that very day we do all it was on tuesday every tuesday we go on night vg and we wait all through the night and pray and uh there is something hot so heavy and if he carried that to the place of prayer, he won't function. He won't be able to find his path. So on the way going, he said to me that there's something he needs to tell me. Immediately, I just knew that, okay, whatever is coming is not going to be too good for the flesh. Mm-hmm. I just knew that. So I told him, I said, hold on, just give me a minute. And I had to clean my heart as in how to erase whatsoever and accept whatsoever that is coming. If it comes very hard, if it comes, because I know something is coming and it's going to be very uh, not easy for me. So after one minute, I said, okay, uh, you know what? I'm hearing you now. You can say what you want to say. And exactly what I had, I received in my spirit was what he said. He said, you know, I don't like the way you talk to me this, this afternoon. I said, wow. I said, okay, is that all? Okay, I don't mean it that way. And I had to do what I did because you were doing what is not right. Okay. But anyway, sorry if that offended you and that's all. And that was lifted up in his heart, that body. And we went to the place of prayer and returned back. Everybody was happy. The the, the, the floor of the spirit was just too much that day. So we have to be in the spirit to, to receive and to give it out. So, He had to give me very hard and I have to receive it. So sometimes when we try to, when we try to uh, water down the instruction or the correction, just to make the people feel all right, we might be taking out the most important part of the message that God wants to pass across. So we have to be in the spirit and give it out the way God wants it to be. I will always tell them, Anyone who have a message for me, I said, hey, don't try to miss anything. Give it to me the way God said it to you. Just tell me that way. Okay, because if you you miss it, if you water it with your own words, 
it might not carry out the assignment. I said, give it to me. However God said it to you, just tell me. Yes. And it has been helping me. It has been working for me. So we have to be in the spirit. We have to be in the spirit of humility to receive and to give out uh, correction. Praise the name of the Lord. Wow. Oh, man, I, oh, ooh, that was meaty wow. right there. And I definitely agree with that as a yes, pastor because I always had to take about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes when you have to mm -hmm. dealing with correction and also, like you saying, receiving it. Because I've, I've, you have had people to say, oh, I did not like the way you said it. And I have no problem apologizing. Mm -hmm. But if it's what, what God said, I'm going to tell you right now, I meant what I said, though. I ain't taking the sentences or whatever I said, the paragraphs, the whole thing. I'm not taking that back. I ain't even because that's God's word. No, I but think yes, we yeah. need to be humble, but we can season it with salt. But see, that's the beauty of all of us. The way God has created, we all have different characters and temperaments. Like everyone not going, I can correct someone in love and okay, yeah, my tone, whatever. But then one of the other leaders can say the exact same thing and they will receive. But a lot of times it's spiritual because of our personalities different from one another. Same word. Because I can get, I can, God can give me a word, give Minister Rose the exact same word on the exact same issue of someone. And they may receive it from her because our, me and her, her, we are totally two different people. Even though we are in two different spiritual office and we, and I could have came humble and she come, if both of us do the exact, we're both coming humble. Their spirit, and it doesn't bother me. They may get offended because why I'm in the office of pastor. And I always tell people, don't, don't take the bait. And she can come right behind me and say the exact same thing. And then they receive it. But that's spiritual. And also God does, God allows that because what's for you is for you. But for all the leaders out there in social media, like Apostle Tybo say, I don't care who you are. Do not water down. Don't be sitting there trying to be, you know, coddling and pet petting the people with God. Well, he ain't say put no, he did not say put no flavor on it. He said, say exactly what I said, but do not come from the motive trying to make the people think you're mad or you know, no, no, don't pacify. Because especially if you know by the spirit, it could be a hard word. And yeah. normally God allows me to tell people when I have to have to give them a hard word, I'll be like, look, I don't think you're going to like what I'm about to tell you that does say the Lord. And But I'm going to tell you right now, pastor's okay with it. Even though my flesh, I will feel the hurt for you, but I'm not going to take, I'm not going, I'm not going to lessen the blow. I'm not going to pull out the, I'm not pulling out the sword. I'm going to tell you what he said. He showed me what he said to tell you. And most of the times, God will show us stuff getting into people's business. And they don't like that. That's in general. None of us. None of us don't want nobody telling us about our business. Mm -hmm. You know, it, but if God shows it to you, like you said, Apostle, you cannot water that down. If God mm -hmm. tells you, you telling the you say, brother, this woman you dating, thus said the Lord, said, she not the one. And that he, she's not the one. Why have you moved in with her? Why are you sleeping with her? She's not the one. <gasps> Pastor, <clears throat> you said that. She's not the one. Well, she helped me. You know, I was in debt and she helped me. I, I don't care what she did. She's not the one. <laughs> she cooked for me. I mean, she's so nice and pretty. And we go out and she and we just talk and we just good, Pastor. She's not the one. She's not the one. Yeah. She's not the one. And, the, and, P, and, and see, once you release the word, leaders out there in platform, don't you yeah. take it back. And don't be trying to water it up, be like, you know, well, let me soften yeah. it. Like, you know, it's um. I'm saying, you know, God's saying, I mean, you know, she's not the one, but maybe if you pray and talk to God, she could be the one. God ain't say all that. He said she's not the one. Ain't no coming to him talking about it. He already said it. She's not the one. So it's no, it's a period behind it. It ain't no you talking to God saying, well, God make her the one. No, she ain't the one. Minister Rose. 
Amen. Um, first of all, to the question that you asked um, about the correction. What attitudes do you have when you when correcting others? You gotta have an attitude of gentleness, patience, and being humble. And uh, and you can do all of this by like I do. I always ask the Lord to Lord give me how to say it, when to say it. And and and, and how, how how do I put it? When to say it, how to say it. This is another one that I can't think of right now, but I asked the Lord to show me and when, show me how to say it, when to say it, and how no. to say it. How? Yeah. Because if I say it the way I want to say it, it may not get across to them. And just like you were just saying too um, about the, uh, the example about you, 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 you use the example of telling somebody that he. Not she's not the one for you and everything. I had to talk to somebody and tell them that the person that they were with was a hindrance to their spiritual walk with the Lord. If I had, you know, I just I had to pray about it. Let them let them know. Now she knows good well that, that he was the one, and I knew that everybody else by her knew it too. Because he wasn't even saved, but she called herself saved. And my thing wow. is that, I mean, he even dabbled in witchcraft. And she wanted to oh, always what? talk about somebody dealing in witchcraft. So, and then afterwards, she said, you know, I kind of felt the dark spirit. Oh, you do that in the first place. But see, if I had it came to her in the wrong way, you you need to leave that bed alone. You know that bed ain't for you. That ain't how God want me to tell nobody something. Because mm -mm. they're not going to receive it. Mm -mm. You know, and you said something else that made me think about Pastor Teresa. It, no matter how you say it, if the Lord told you to say it, you're not going to apologize for it. You made me think about a course that I, I took up called Apologetics. Uh -huh. And there is no apology for the word of God at all. If God uh -huh. tells you to say it, there's no apology. You are, there, there's no what? apology at all. Ain't that, you wrong if you're going to go to somebody and apologize to them for something that God told you to say. So there's we'll no try to sugarcoat it. Yeah, that's basically we'll put no extras on it. So you have to be careful. Be careful and, and go and move in God's time. Timing and position is everything. Because sometimes God may tell you to go to somebody, but then they got a right time for you to say it. You just going to jump up and go do it. And, and, and God is telling you, wait, 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 wait. You know, it ain't time yet. So we have to, you know, wait on the Lord. Like I said, time and position is everything you got. You got to be in a position to tell them and they have to be in the right position to receive. So therefore, you got to go, like I said, with patience, gentleness, and humbleness. That's the attitude you got to have when you go to tell somebody something. Amen. Amen. Apostle Robin? Well, when you're correcting someone, you got to make sure that you're coming to them with the right motive. You got to make sure that you're praying first of all you know because sometimes we when we go to correct somebody sometimes we can come in flesh and i know that we come in flesh so we got to make sure that we keep it biblical and get flesh out of the way and also use empathy even though we have to correct that person we can still use empathy you know so we're not trying to hurt that one's that person's feelings, but we are trying to correct them and get them back in alignment if we see that they're out of alignment. So decency Amen. in order. Decency in order. Amen. Anybody else? Any comments? Let me ask this question. Let's since we're gonna stay right here for a minute. Oh, go ahead, whoever who spoke. Minister Isaiah, go ahead. Yeah, I was I, I was kind of on the line where I know how I could be. I could be gentle, but I could also be like straight to the point. And if the person comes to me and say they don't like the way I said it, 
I, I apologize for my tone, but I apologize for what I said. I'm quick. I, I would do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I will, I, I've done that quite a few times. So, you know, I'm sorry for you know, how I, mm-hmm. I put it out there, but I don't change yeah. what I say. You know, mm-hmm. if it's spiritually, I don't change it. But I will, I will apologize because sometimes we call up, we, if, if flesh, we call up in that moment of mm-hmm. excitement, even mm-hmm. when, we, when we deliver in the word. You know, they so, not. <laughs> but, so, uh, so you know, because people don't really know you behind the scenes. So, I, yeah. you know, and God, as far as my relationship, he don't have no problem mm-hmm. with that. He don't have no problem with me apologizing for my tone. He said, because they don't know your mm-hmm. sense of humor or your personality like that. Yeah. But you better mm-hmm. not apologize mm-hmm. for what I told you to say. Exactly. That's how that's how that's how you I look say at exactly things, you know? what I mean. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and God said yeah. in spirit, when, when when you're in mm-hmm. spirit and in truth and correcting someone, God tells me you better say what I mean. Because you in me, you better mean what I say. So that'll let them know that, oh, I meant what I said. Now, yeah, I apologize if you felt like you were offended for the tone of my voice. I can I can apologize for the tone of my voice, but I'm not apologizing for the word. I'm not taking back none of that. If I say that you're going to die because you're up here, hang God is saying, if you don't get rid of this person, you're going to die within six months, then so be it. Yeah. So be it. And sometimes we have to give a hard word like that. I gave one this, yeah. like, to, that God, they, they were, ooh. I said, God said, if you don't get rid of this person, you're going to be gone. You ain't, you're not going to make it to the end of this year. Mm-hmm. Something's going to happen in your life. I don't know what it is. If it's going to be an accident or whatever, or you're going to lay down and God ain't going to let you wake up. But you ain't going to make it to the end of this year if you keep on mm-hmm. having this person in your spirit and you up here connected to him. Point blank. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you with that one, Minister Isaiah. Yeah. I ain't apologizing for I ain't apologizing for not one word, syllable, comma, mm. exclamation, nothing script. I ain't apologizing for I'm no not. nothing that the Holy Spirit say to say. I just did it really recently. Social I ain't media, apologizing. Y'all need to me. be that way too. Some of y'all stop watering mm. down this word, getting up here on these platforms, getting in these organizations, getting on social media, watering it down. You know what well, the Lord said it. I mean, he said this. But you know, mm-hmm. you don't really have to like really go through all of it. Just try a little bit. No, if God said do not fornicate, that's exactly what he meant. I mean, mm-hmm. I understand, you know, you that's your girlfriend and y'all dating. It's just that, you know, y'all got to, God says, you know, not to do it all the time. No, he didn't say not do it all the time. He said don't fornicate. That's what he said. If you're not going to marry her, you should not be fornicating. He ain't say nothing about no little bit of time, no half of the time, one day out the week. He ain't say none of that. And some of y'all be mm-hmm. telling people in your congregations and under and, and wanting them to think that it's okay. Well, they're going to eventually get married. Well, until they get married, they're not supposed to be sleeping together. Mm-hmm. I don't care how old you is. I don't care if you're getting married at 65. You better not be sleeping with your partner. Y'all better be doing a whole lot of talking, praying, laughing. And yeah, y'all can hang out all you want, but you better go home alone. And even during the day, if y'all off of work, you better not invite them over unless you have all the family over there. You can't be alone together because the flesh is wicked. Amen. Any other comments? Let me ask this question. So on this line, I had to write it down. So do you see, do any of you see now as of today, do you see or trust the motives of the leaders of today when they are correcting you or others? Do you <laughs> trust the leaders of today when they are, meaning as far as do you see, do you, do you design, do you trust the motives of the leaders of today when they correct you or others? That's a hard one. Yeah, y'all got to sit on that one. Mm-hmm. Sit on yeah, the little bit. I ain't trying to raise it. It won't raise. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Can I say something? Because I'm sure trying to raise my hand. It ain't raising. My uh, hand is it's, up. It's, it's, up, there. it's up there. Oh, okay. It's up there. Yes, Mr. Rose. Go ahead and comment. comment. It's, it's up there. You can take your hand down there. It, it, it won't go down now. I ain't gonna I don't know. You keep laughing, dude. No, uh, some of these leaders today, I don't trust they 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 wear correction, they're molded. They're molded. Mm -hmm. Totally off. And I know that's all fat because the ministry that I just left, I had um I don't like 
say too much, but anyway, because we all lie. But uh, the person was calling themselves correcting me, and the way they were correcting me, that they were the one in the wrong, and then they turned around and twisted it and made it sound like that I was in the wrong. And I asked them, I didn't do like they did. They got to call everybody. They, they did what they called themselves on to do. And I waited till it was just me. Well, her daughter was up in there too, but she said that. But anyway, I said, well, why would you lie like that? Because I want to. Oh, wow. That's exactly what she said. Because I want to. Because I can. Because I can. Mm -hmm. So, no. Absolutely not. Their motives are wrong. Even though, you know, uh, if, even um, the video that we saw that time when the, the pastor called himself correcting um, the congregation for not giving him his birthday gift when he asked for. That was a selfish motive. He wanted some kind of business watch that he said he'd been asking for three years. He called him, who he called him down the stand in Mexico. No, I do not trust some of these leaders today, their motives, but when they call themselves correct somebody. And then yeah. the other pastor that uh, sat up there and called himself embarrassing that woman, talking about her, the reason because she couldn't have no babies and all that kind of stuff before, before the whole congregation. He should have been talking to her privately. Not before everybody like that. That wasn't that wasn't that was right. And if I was her husband, I would would have said something correct him, check him right there. You don't uh, embarrass my wife like that. But yeah, I don't trust him over. Amen. Apostle Robin, do you see or trust the motives of the leaders of today when they correct you or others? Well, the leaders that I'm under, um, they correct in decency and order. But if you're talking about some of the leaders that we have seen out there, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing a heap. You know, the video of the, um, the leader that slapped the, the man in the face. Where do you oh. do that at? <laughs> where, 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 where do you do, where do, you do that, that at? What was, what was the purpose? I of don't that? need no babies, y'all. And I <laughs> am funny. God, you already like, know. How can, how can oh, you justify yeah, that as being correct? In decency and order when you're doing like, something like me, that you know God, he's God. like he took yeah, his bitch. hand he's like he I'm wrenched sorry, his hand back gone. you know that word <laughs> wrench he said you know took it way mm. back and then kapap and, and his neck snap back you know i'm just mm. like that i don't understand can't tell you that i understand if y'all understand help me understand I don't even care if you're from Alaska. Jesus ain't, like, you know, you know, Jesus you ain't letting no, Jesus no. didn't. The beating that he took, he allowed it. He did. He allowed he did. it. That was right. But he trust did. and believe you. Before then, did y'all see any of the Pharisees or Sadducees roll up and hit him? They better had not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He stood firm. He was like, right. I wish I wish a devil would. <laughs> I wish a devil would. Because even when he cast out the devils and the um what, what it was in the man, and they was all scared because they knew and he shut their mouth. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Jesus was mm -hmm. like, I wish you would roll up and open your mouth and want to run off at the mouth telling people because it ain't it ain't my time. But, yeah, you but know me. But Jesus, okay. uh, I'm, mm -hmm. they weren't going to smack no Jesus. Right. Like, they, hand, said, they played a lot right. of lip game and word I game with him. Right. And they would, when he was that. sitting around, you see, they, they try to come up close and play lip game, but they mm -hmm. weren't putting their hands on him. Mm -hmm. Oh, he made, his but, presence was powerful. He made them but, slap me mm -hmm. and look, don't right. even do it in a joking way. Oh, I'm just slapping you, Jesus. Put some oil on. No, no. Okay, boy. But, but mm. how do you explain that to your congregation? How is that decency and order? It's not. It's not. You know, and then, and then you wonder why people, you know, don't want to go to a church building, you know, because the church is in us. They don't want to go to these buildings because so much is happening in these these buildings. It's just... It's, it's awful. They don't even want to come online. Well, that's true, but you know, to go in, in physical in person and mm, 
Mm. I wouldn't need. <laughs> I feel y'all social media it's, you know we having a balance with y'all with this question it, it just compiled the Holy Spirit told me it ain't even in my notes that's why I had to write it down to make sure because if I had just spilled out my mouth I would have forgot he already do it he said write that one down go ahead um, I'm going to have to come to Minister Isaiah then back to you Minister Rose okay Run that question, question again the question, was, the question was do you see the question is the question is, do you see or trust the motives of the leaders of today when they correct you or others? I can let them correct me, but I'm a, but they better be on the right. I listen to you, but if it ain't right, because I'm I'm gonna let you correct me when I'm wrong, but you gotta be coming right because I'm gonna let you know you're wrong. So I it, you always told y'all because I'm a corrective individual, so I, I gotta be open to be corrected. So uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. But I'm, I'm examining at the same time, you know. But um, like I said, I, I, I could trust me, but I'm different. I could, I could listen to your motives. But if, if when I'm wrong, I could take corrections. But you got to come right because you don't come right. I'm going to be prepared for you because I'll be moved. And let me just say this one thing about the turn of the cheek part. People get it wrong. They think Jesus turned his cheek all the time. There were people that was actually scared of him because they ain't going around just hitting on Jesus. So we got that thing, sure the head that, that thing in the head that people go around and he just, they could just do what they want to him. And he just, just he just smiled at them. And then he didn't work. There's many, there's many situations in the Bible. Can I think of the word they use? There were people who were actually afraid. They ain't mess with Jesus. So we got to get out of our head that he said, you always turned, he always turned the other cheek. You know, I wasn't like that. You know, he was mm -hmm. just like when he turned up towards the temple, he wasn't turning those cheeks that day, you know? So, so I just want to say that part. We got to get up ahead thinking about him. Jesus always turned the other cheek. He was respectful. He's loving. He comforted you in your angers. But there was times Jesus didn't take none of that stuff, you know? He sure so did. Uh, so well, I just why y'all think Jesus a punk and he was a daggone mat that they walked over when he was alive? Ain't nobody walking yeah, over yeah. Jesus like no door mat. No, no, he was no, not a punk. Oh. No, no. Okay, amen. But to answer your question, I mean, I could be corrected, but I'm be when you correct me. And my attitude is that if I'm in that position where you correct me, my attitude is a certain way. So I'm examining you at the same time. So if I think you're correct, you come right for you. Yeah, you're right. I'm take time to examine what you told me when you corrected me, you know. But you got you got to be right because I'm a, I might not say nothing, but I'm gonna just step back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, well, let me see what he said to me. I'm let me examine it. Yeah, he was right. If you're wrong, I'm gonna probably come back and bring it back up to you in a godly way. But you know, but but it's been because I had I had a few incidents where I actually had to uh, had to uh, correct people. You know, even going back to church, other church rules and talking to talking about, and I had to correct ministers, the pastors there. But I got him along because I almost had to shake him a little bit. I told Rose when I first went to that church, "What if something ain't right?" <laughs> something wasn't right. If I got the pastor, the pastor alone, I said, you know, I had to talk with him privately and he couldn't even argue me. He knew I was right, you know, because I came straight and scripturally with him. And then I'm quite sure he had more knowledge than, than me, I assume, but I, I was able to correct him. He was, he listened to me humbly, you know. So, yeah, just, it's always to be corrected, but you got to come right when you do correct people. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah, Here's I, another I just one. Wanna, um, can y'all hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to ask the uh, question about this video I saw, and I want to know, was it right for the pastor to do this up on a Sunday morning? The choir got up and started singing, and they put this woman up to sing, and he just cut the choir and told him to sit down. And he said, I want y'all to put up y'all best on Sunday morning. I just say amateur night at the Apollo. So, you know, but she could sing for real. I think the video. So was it the right time for him to say that or he should have just cut the choir and then wait until quiet uh, uh, practice and tell him or uh, how how, how do y'all feel about that? That's the question. Well, we can, uh, it's just for me, well, me as being a pastor, it's so many, when you look at situations like that, there's so many dynamics to it because number one, we don't even know his whole frame of mind 
why he gonna come out and say that especially openly to the congregation it, he may felt that he was gonna say it openly because he doesn't have anything to hide come, come from that perspective um if he sound and, and he's his tone was disrespectful then he and if he wasn't if he felt in his spirit because we don't know how he is inside meaning if unless god has discerned and showed you that he was not humble and he was all in flesh then no he shouldn't have did that because you in flesh because you just want to show off because you just want to use the office of pastor and you want to use it in a way to bully people and want to think that you can get say what you want to say to get away with saying things to them and then embarrassing them god doesn't like that you don't we don't use our offices of authority to to embarrass anybody and some of you out there in social media even in the government and on these jobs just because you're a supervisor or a manager or whatever it gives you no right to think because you may have a higher position and they are under your department that you can speak to them in a manner as if they're beneath you but remember you were under somebody all of us are so with that perception then he's totally out of order he should not have you know approached he could have approached it a different way you didn't have to do it all out for the world and the whole congregation to see if he didn't want the choir to sing or whatever but if he did not want the choir to sing or he could have just put it differently instead of just being harsh saying okay cut everybody sit down this ain't the, this ain't no show time but the apollo you didn't have to say that. You could have just said, yeah, right, amateur tonight. Amateur tonight or whatever. This ain't going to be no whatever. Okay, if he felt that in the spirit realm, he could have just kind of put it another way and just said, look, right now, this is um, the atmosphere is not really conducive for the choir just yet. Let us just calm down. Thank y'all for y'all, which y'all, you know, preparing. But right now, if the pastor feels that the you know the atmosphere is not conducive and however he needs to lead it he might say i just need everyone to be still first i, I need the whole i need the whole building to just be quiet no mumbling no nothing you know it could have been other you know uh tactics spiritual tactics that he could have taken but <laughs> if he was if his whole motive was he won't be smart and show off then know that he was out of order with them I, I don't know if that was in front of the time, but to me, I said, like, okay, it was all right for him to stop because the woman couldn't sing. But the way the thing that he said, the one but after he stopped him was like, I'm like, you know, can I, can I add to that? Can I add to that? You know, that's it. Can I add? Oh wait, oh, no, Minister Rose, you're done? Because I cause she going in and out and I can't hear. Oh, I'm going to ask that answer because I'm good. Her face. Go ahead. I'm done. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Apostle Robin. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to say, you know, it's a time and a place for everything. And mm -hmm. not everybody that gets in the choir can really sing. You know, and I think about the word, you know, it's like, God said, make a joyful noise until the Lord you know and it's just like you know he could have handled that differently you know i'm not saying you know yeah, he not, have you know and then he could have just waited you know let them sing their song let them sing that song you know <laughs> they yeah, no, it, it depends on the atmosphere. I, I, I would say depend on the atmosphere of the room if i don't if the holy spirit is like okay it's too much going on here you know what i'm saying but then also if it's somebody sounding oh, for real, like if it, now okay let's say praise and worship going on let's just say this scenario and the person can't yeah, sing come yeah i saw him get stopped in church before I'm, so i have to I'm gonna say you know what and and, and 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 i know god's spirit and god is like look this sound like a gangling gong to me a clangling gong i don't feel I don't, it ain't no praises coming to me. It doesn't smell, it doesn't sound like and smell like sweet fragrance to me. And the reason God feels that because guess what? It's the heart. So then yes, if the pastor looking and I'm like, okay, they being entertaining. You up here, you can't, you off beat, but you, you up here, you got the dance steps though. Y'all want to bounce to the music, but your voice are you off the chords. I'd be like, oh no, stop. We got to stop this quiet i need y'all to quiet down for a minute because the holy spirit wants some peace and quiet 
See, like you said, it's other tactics. It is other ways he could have said it or done it. But in that scenario, if you if you clearly know in the atmosphere, because that's where the discerning of the spirit, if you're discerning God's spirit and you know it, and you know God ain't, he ain't getting it. Because God, first of all, God loves music. Ooh, he loves music. That's why Satan can't stand us and he can't stand music. Because God, and then he mad because he was over music. And because he wouldn't do what he was supposed to do, he got kicked, he got, he got fired. And so when it comes to music and knowing that Satan hates it and God loves it, you want to make sure that you are in tune with the Holy Spirit when you are singing. If you, for those of you that are singers out there, that your angelic voice, that's what it is. It's an angelic voice, not a demonic voice and, a pro, and not a demonic uh, show. Ain't all that twerking and shaking and rocking and, and dress flying up and mm -hmm. uh robes too tight. That's not an angelic dis it's not an angelic presentation or demonstration that you are appreciative of the voice that is going into the ears of the Lord. Something y'all think about out there social media because some of y'all choirs y'all do and some of y'all leaders that allow some of the dress wear that some of these choirs be wearing. I'm like. God, even though God created your business, he don't want to see that and he don't want you to be showing it to everybody. Right. Minister Isaiah, did you have your hand up and then Elder Bud? No, go ahead, Elder Bud. All right, Elder Bud. So, Elder Bud, why? I mean, um, oh, well, I, I was going to ask something. I was yeah. going to say something. What you going to ask? Yeah. Well, the one thing also that's we haven't talked about his reverence for God. And, you know, when he walked with the disciples, they were all reverent until Peter spoke up and he rebuked him personally to his face. You know, right there, he said, I'm telling you right now, you're saying this, but I'm telling you what's, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But reverencing God as who he is and who he says he is. Okay, well, Elder Bud, if that's the case, we're not seeing that. So it goes to my question. So do you see or trust the motives of the leaders of today when they correct others or if they correct you? If you're not well, seeing. Listening and listening and hearing is two things, okay? Mm -hmm. When you're list hearing and goes in one ear and out the other, you're not mm -hmm. listening. Listenings come from the heart. And when you listen and take time to, you know, like I said, we're not all it, you know? And all of a sudden, we're listening to somebody. Maybe they have some pain that really hurts inside that we don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Because in the spirit realm, if we're doing what we're supposed to be, we'll be able to pick up on certain things to be able when, how, and how, or why. Three things, those three things all have to go together with humility and be able to let the spirit move, you know, because we don't know. I, I remember, I had to tell you this story for a minute. There was this woman that was in line, and there was a whole line of, in the wait, Walmart, whatever you want to say. And everybody was talking, you know, behind each other, saying, why was this woman get out of the road and everything else, you know? And and it really what happened, her, her um, son died in a car wreck, okay? And she was upset, and she couldn't think. So the woman closed the cash register. She was willing to get fired and be able to minister to that woman on the side and says, I'm going to take my break now. So all that time, all those people were in a hurry. Oh, yeah, we just came from church. We're, we want to get get home, you know, all this. But being sensitive and reverent before God is what I try to do. I really do. I try to work in that in my life to where I'm really hearing more sensitive in my ears than just going in and coming out. I want to be able to grab a hold of it, suck it up inside of me like a sponge and live it. Then I can live it. Then that way I can be more sensitive to when somebody says something when they don't. Okay. Amen. One more That's question. It. We didn't get to all of them. So I know this will be a part two out there in social media for those that didn't make it in hopefully you'll come in and i'll do a recap for the next time when i will teach but last question that just the holy spirit popped out why don't people 
correct leaders when it's clearly known that they are wrong and out of order? I want y'all to think before you answer, I want y'all to think about, because we see it a lot, and some of us have been in congregations or been a part of congregations that you clearly have heard and God and the Holy Spirit is and the Holy Spirit could have been in the house, but you've clearly heard and you know the spirit of the Lord and you know that that leader is up there misquoting. You know, they pray for lying, but you still sit there to the whole end of the service. So why don't people correct leaders when it's clearly known that they have um, that they have that they are wrong or out of order? Minister Rose, then back to Apostle Robin. First of all, they have been told that you're supposed to honor your leader, and you ain't supposed to. This is what they, they, they teach you down through the years, that uh, you you ain't supposed to know more than what your pastor knows. So, you know, it, they make them feel like they beneath him. That's why so many people put leaders up on the pedestal, because they teach them to do that. And, that, and that's how they do it. It's just, it's sad to me because I have a cousin that she has the gift of of design. She is a prophet, but no prophet if y'all like. So, but anyway, she, she had went to, uh, he's a cousin of ours and he is a, a, a pastor. And she spoke to him in private and told him what the Lord, thus said the Lord. He got up before the whole congregation and gonna blast her and tell her, uh, and tell, we tell the congregation that don't, nobody got the right or authority to go be over God when God made uh, him the pastor, he was the pastor, and that no nobody hit, listen to nothing she say when they, you know, when it comes to, and this is what these leaders are teaching. They, they've been teaching this for years. You're supposed to honor and respect. See, I have a problem with that. I got a problem with I got a problem with you. Because the problem is, I don't care what anyone teaches you. If you clearly know, because now it goes to common sense. It's not even about you. If you clearly know, if I'm, if I come out here with my pants on my arms, why are you sitting here letting me have my pants on my arms and don't say anything? That don't even make any sense, social media, whatever. So oh. it's not even about what thus said the Lord, because God gives us power and authority to correct one another. He's spirit. We're human. Why is it that people will not correct the leaders? Because you're human, human to human. You know for a fact that God did not say this. They appear twisting the word, but you're going to keep sitting in the audience and you're going to stay there for the whole church service. They manipulate them and put fear in is what I wanted to get it, so that you know. That's why they do it. They manipulate and they put fear in these people and have them thinking that God is a victim if they do that. That's they think God is going to be mad if they got up and exactly, lied. Yep, yeah, because that's what they teach them. And the devil is a liar. Apostle Robin. Sorry about that. Um, what came to my mind to... Um, I concur with a little bit of what Minister Rose said. You know, you got fear that's going on. You got um, sometimes intimidation that's going on, especially when it comes to offices. They feel like that they don't have the right to uh, say anything because that person may be in a higher office than them. Um, they, they'll compromise. And a lot of people um, in the church is mesmerized. You got a lot of witchcraft, manipulation. A lot of things are going on in the church that is um, is taking place. You know, you got the seducing spirits, you know, and people see it, but they don't see it. It's hindering spirits. It's a lot of spirits that are going on in the church body that are stopping people from being vocal. And um, they're, they're silenced by this manipulation spirit, the, the spirit of seduction that is running rampant in that's running rampant in, in the church body, you know, and it's blinding the people of God. 
And then that tells you, us out there in social media, here in this classroom, that people are not, their discernment is not as strong as what it needs to be. And if you see that your discernment is off, you better pray and ask God to give you the discernment that you need and wisdom as well. Because a lot of stuff is going on that we, we sit there and we say, okay, well, why didn't, because we're looking at so much on social media and we say, my God, we cross our arms and we was like, why didn't that person speak up? Because they're silenced. They're silenced by these seducing spirits and, and they, they can't even believe when they walk out of the church building, why did they sit through it? It's witchcraft at its finest. Magicians. Uh, that's the word I was looking for. I said, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even on these platforms. Yeah. It is witchcraft at mm -hmm. its finest. Y'all mm -hmm. mm -hmm. haven't seen that? Mm -hmm. But it's sad because, um, because mm -hmm. most of you out there, social media, in the classroom knows because you um how can you, you know well of course i can say how can you not know but if you're not a child of god it don't apply to you that's why you don't know for those of you that have backslidden and you call yourself a leader of course you don't know because you you in a reprobated mind you all up in the you and then all of a sudden you start thinking well it wasn't for me to say nothing well you was a part of the congregation you sat here under it so now you're held accountable. Why you comprom that's why, and then the compromising comes in at. Mm -hmm. Why are you compromising? Why are you well, compromising? that compromise, that compromising spirit is gonna get you to hell. Because yes. so, yeah. I do not want to be with the. I mean, think about it. When did Jesus cast out the spirits, and and they begged, they was like, okay, and all of them just went in the pigs and over the cliff. That's the go along, get along game. Because see, he didn't cast out like it wasn't just one; it was a group of spirits. So Legion. if you're part of the Legion. number, so for example, Legion. if Jesus cast out 20 spirits, if, if it was if it was 20 in that particular story, and you number 18, so and you see everybody going over the cliff, you just gonna go right along with them. You and they know that you know they dying because they can raise the body, they're just gonna be dead flat. So I'm saying that to say you hear, and you ain't not wrong with your hearing unless you can't hear. And you have, and we are built in the image of God, meaning you have common sense. You have the ability to discern right from wrong. You, you have the ability to feel the cold and feel the oven and feel the hot. But Pastor, and I'm going to interject. Can I interject? And you said they oh, hear, God. they may hear naturally, but they're not hearing spiritually. So they're spiritually deaf. And they're that's a problem. Deaf. It's a problem. And social media, some of you out there need to ask yourself, are you naturally good at hearing and spiritually dead at hearing? Or you or you just dead both ways. You know, you can't oh, hear so naturally so or spiritually. Well, the world just said that about the hearing. You know, that they they Because like the Bible says, some of them have ears to hear, but they don't hear. Right. And those that do, let them hear. Elder Bud, you had your hand up, then Minister Isaiah. You're on mute. I was going to say... Yeah, buzz, buzz, buzz. I'm all right. Yeah. What I was going to say is when I first came here from uh, Florida to Ohio and we were looking for a church, you know, we had a family, we we're looking for a church, went to Sam Assembly of God in Bison. and Bison. Uh, and we didn't have no, we didn't know nobody. My grandparents is the only one we knew in Cambridge, brought my wife up here and a baby and everything else. She was pregnant on top. So anyway, with all that being said, <clears throat> This guy was talking about he had a dream. Now, this is this is how you, I mean, this was the ABCs to me, okay? We're using common sense also. But anyway, the pastor says, I had a dream last night that there was a soldier, and he was trying to climb the church, get on top of the church. And he says, um, I don't know, I'm putting it together the best I can. And so anyway, um, 
okay, we're listening to your dream all the way through and all this. And what does it mean? This is what's going on in my spirit. And he says, the interpretation of this dream is that we're so far in debt with this church. <laughs> Honest to goodness, I never, we came from Pl Florida. So we're like 10 years ahead of these people. And so um, he flipped this board over. And he said, well, who give me two twenty dollars Who this? We get this church built up, and then we can be able to finance it, be out from under it, and we'll be free. And that's that's common sense now. And, you know, I sat there and I thought, man, I don't know if I want to come to this church anymore. You know, it's just weird. You know, I, I you know, I was just a new Christian, too. And so anyway, it get, checked my spirit to know that we didn't go there no more. OK, because of that. I said, that's not real. And then I saw a false prophet one time in a Pentecostal church up in Coshocton. And there was this woman the, from another country. There's two of them. And one was pushing a wheelchair with the urine bag on and all this covered up. And all of a sudden, she's called. They had these canes. And now this is a Pentecostal spirit filled church. And so, anyway, I always videoed the, I always videoed the church services. That's what I enjoyed doing, you know, so it could give it to somebody that di didn't get there. So anyway, we're doing this, and all of a sudden, this woman, there's this woman that, the, the, her son had got in a motorcycle more across um, one of those um, motorbikes or speed speed on hills and all that speed bike or whatever and it went up in the air and it crushed his back spine and so anyway he she'd been this way for about 10 years okay so when these prophets came into a spirit-filled church and they were trying to say, we're going to put oil on him, anoint him with the oil and all this, and add drum roll and all this kind of stuff. And I sat there, and after the service, I didn't say anything then. But the first thing I did, as soon as I got home, was I called the pastor. And he picked up on it because they were slapping the pastor. That's what caught my eye. I said, you don't go slapping a man of God around like that and saying, give him the spirit, give him the spirit. Uh, to to a man of God, but see, there are simple things, common sense, like you said, that I can see a lot clearer than I can really deep, you know. But I'm working on it. You know what I mean? What I learn, I'm learning a lot about a lot of things. And like I said, it's how we say it, why we say it, and when we say it. You know, all those three things interpret how to do it. You know. Yeah. Minister Isaiah, then I'm gonna have closing remarks and close us out in prayer. Okay, amen. I can't have this before. Let's do under out. the sun. This is going up. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but you're going in okay, and out. Uh, I don't know if you're too close. Let me uh, let me do it. I'll sound now. Can you say hear something me? again? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm trying. Uh huh. Okay. How's what's going on? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I think I mentioned it before, and uh, their discretion, nothing new under the sun. This has been going on in the churches for thousands of years. Fear. Fear of our leaders, even from the time of Jesus, um, the Pharisees and the, all these priests and stuff like that, they had have, they have these people afraid of them. And the same thing they ain't going today. It's fear. Like uh, I think Pastor Robin was talking about how you raise up in the church. You feel, you feel the ministry. You feel the preachers feel the same thing wrong to them when they are wrong. That's how we end up with these cult mentalities. People that were cult mentalities because, oh, you can't say this about pastors such and such. Did anybody remember years ago when um, they were protesting this truck in front of the church in Brooklyn? The guy spoke up against the preacher. Another guy walked up to him. Just one of the people from the church walked up to the guy and just punched him in the face. They said something wrong about the minister. This mentality we have for these so-called leaders, we, get, we fall into that cult mentality. We fall into that you can't do nothing wrong. Not even fit that minister. Go in, go in your, go in your pocket. Open your pocket and take your money out. You don't open your darn mouth. That's how much controlling they are. 
because we're not we're, we're following we follow, we follow the state and we're following we follow these leaders they just they're flesh they're just like we are we probably led by the word led by the spirit but we in these churches that's why I said, that's why our churches are run by state and the people and so good people in the church is being controlled by the devil and that's why you can't let go of these ministers the preacher who they know that wrong is in two left shoes but they always say they're right. They're being controlled. They're, they're being led astray. And it's been going on for, it's all been going on forever. Until we start thinking about, until we start thinking for yourself and listening to what God says instead of what man says, you're going to continue to be this way. And that's when we say the blind leading the blind, blind and we all fall into the truth. And that's what's happening now in these churches. Ministers, I remember a story well when I was um, younger. Well, People talk about how the, the minister was uh, met, messing with the girl, young girls in the church. The young girls told their old parents, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't do that minister, pastor, what's his name? Listen that. Don't say nothing like that about him. When he even listen to their old ch children. Control. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go on a long time. And that's all I got to say. I get passionate about that one. But it's nothing new under yeah, the sun. Because um, it's the devil. It's the devil. The you devil been around church. since the beginning of time. Yeah. He's been around. Yeah. And I don't know why we, the leaders, y'all keep playing this, this blame game going on. Mm -hmm. Devil ain't make nobody do nothing. All he do is put a, he just put an opportunity right in front of you. He just put, he put an opportunity right in front of you and you take the bait every time. And y'all, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Y'all should be ashamed before your congregation, you should be ashamed before God when you see stuff that you clearly know is wrong and you don't say nothing. You That's see people point. being spiritually raped and manipulated and violated and you don't even defend them with the word of God. You say nothing. Nothing. But you want getting to heaven. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you're going. This is where I've got. You ain't going. And then you won't even repent and pray. And then your motives, you don't even care if the person is injured, they're spiritually injured and hurt, ran over. You don't even care. Nah, I think you're gonna get left behind. You ain't you gonna be hurt. You ain't, you ain't going. God that Jesus is gonna say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't care how long on earth you think you was a pastor, a bishop, or apostle, or whatever you led the church for 25 years. You ain't coming up in here, Minister Rose. Yes, I agree with uh, what Minister Isaiah has said because I know of a case of uh, you know, a case where the young lady the pastor was raping her, you know, that was off her and the uh the dad did not believe her when she said it, but the mom did. And this tore up the marriage. They got a divorce. The man mm -hmm. stayed at church. And the mom and the daughter went somewhere else. But this daughter, this has messed with her psychologically, so that she was so drawn off. She didn't want to communicate. And this caused her to have problems in school and everything, too. Because I, 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 what I, I, I gather from it, not only the hurt from her, um, the pastor doing her that, but her father as well something on for him not to believe and then the marriage to show up. I'm like, what? I'm like, Lord, if I'm wrong, was he giving it the dad to the man recap? He didn't like he, he didn't believe it and then he got mad the you know the, the wife and then bless her. You know, all these kind of thoughts go through your mind though sometimes. But but you know we have to be you know very watchful and discern for we going to these churches. I know men, uh, Minister Isaiah have visited several churches here in the Lakewood area, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I have not gone in there felt one was, should have been the place that I would, should make my home. I have not really, and I'm, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's all right, even though that people say, well, you need to be in the church house. No, I don't. I'm yet serving the Lord. He said, to stay back together, just us together. I'm not letting nobody, I'm not just getting in the church so I can be manipulated. 
so I can be controlled over somebody. Then they, then they don't want to be there no more. Remember, the sun set free. Y'all better remember, it's free indeed. God set you free it's from free a manipulation. Indeed. You, yes, honey, man, you better be. I will, yeah, I will um, continue to, to, to do uh, my worship service on the internet until the Lord leave me and I feel like somebody is worthy of me being up underneath their ministry because so far I haven't found anything in this area. And I'm, it's sad to say, but that's how it is. Isn't that sad to say it's the truth and the truth will yeah. set you free, but the truth hurts that there are in many states that, you know, and, and, and of course the COVID was just the icing on the cake when it hit the whole world. But before the COVID, a lot of people were not going into organizations, into buildings because of the behind the scene things that are going on. And so when your eyes open up and you realize and make a choice that you will not be a puppet, you will not be part of the click gang. You will not be a go along, get along gang member because Jesus wasn't. Jesus wasn't part of any organization. He was the word. He was with the word and he is the word. So all what, what I'm saying is you have to be what God calls you to be. Whether it's from your home because we the church because the Holy Spirit lives in all of us. Whether you in your home, whether you sitting on your porch, you know, those things that are orchestrated as, you know, um, the way that, yes, some of the world and other organizations, they present opportunities to do things. I'll give you an opportunity to preach at my church. Well, I'm preaching every day. My lifestyle is a, my lifestyle is a sermon and a message. Because I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. I don't need to entertain and preach to nobody. As if I be, if you be who God called you to be, the soul's going to come to you. You can't hide the Holy Spirit that's in you. If you were your true child of God, you can't stop people from coming up talking to you. You could be in the market. I be in the market. People just be coming up. It all starts when they say hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, hey, how you doing? It's something about you. It's a girl about you. God bless you. Oh, you shouldn't never that see. That's the, that's like a kid. That's like a, a a sure signal. When I hear the word God, and that that's like my opening. Up, oh, Holy Spirit, you must want me to minister because they oh, still standing here. They talk about God. That's Let's like you struck a bed. You know, struck a bed. Oh, we right here and we right here near the vegetables. We talking about we get right half church. Mm -hmm. Well, pull out your phone, pull out my phone. Look, I got scripture for you. Yep, we up here, we up here having church near the vegetables and the fruit aisle. Mm -hmm. I, get it. I get it, but some of you don't want to, y'all. So some of y'all are thinking that things, and if you have lived over 30, you better realize that things have, especially the world, things in the world, the things of the world, spiritual things that is a part of the world have changed it ain't going back to the way it used to be this is the time you know, the bible is saying you really god saying god says seek him and you will find how many of you what how much effort do you put into seeking god some of you put a lot of effort into seeking people on your job seeking stuff y'all up here on tiktok YouTube, all of this, seeking all this stuff, looking at pornography, looking at nasty mm -hmm. stuff, looking at other people's wives and husbands. Oh, you seeking that out. You seeking out all mm -hmm. these stuff with the world doing, but you ain't seeking about what God is doing. Something to think about out there, everyone. Last comment, and then um, Elder Bud, could you close us out in prayer? Uh Minister oh. Rose, then then I'll um leave up okay, for okay. final comment. Mm -hmm. One quick comment. You were talking about having service in the in the in the you well in the best bar. We had service in the um pool court at the Lakeland Mall here mm -hmm. in It just it was a, it was what you call an impromptu sir or because it was like two missionaries. Saw me and my friend, and they came up to us and said that they saw the glory of the gospel. They just knew that we were, you know, with the truth. So, 
it wind up, we wind up down the, the end of the, the food court the day and went to go purchase some food and started praying and, and from one of, one, of the, one of the guys behind the counter. And one of them came to the Lord just by us praying. Praise and the phone came up we started praying. Do you know somebody had to say, had to say the Lord said to do all things decent and in order. That ain't decent and all. What's wrong with you? Wow. Somebody, somebody they, right. No, that's He's those people. Those people that say that they try to compartmentalize God. They want to. They they have mm. an image of God. Like, okay, God is only supposed to be talked about when there is a person with a robe on, with the mm -hmm. collar on, with incense of blowing. When there are nice church chairs, that's the only time and the only place that you need to say about God and be praying and hooting and hollering. Not in the um, not in, not in the supermarket, not at the gas station, oh, not talking to the bum on the corner because that's not the place. So you're out of decency and order. The devil is a liar. His feet stinking. The truth showing sure up ain't in him. See, that's nothing but the devil. Want to compartmentalize and he put a he put a thought in your head saying that's not of God. Everything on this earth is was made by God for him. So if God traveled, the, if God put so much into creating us and creating the earth, what makes you think he's going to keep it from us? He didn't. He gave the earth. The earth is ours. But some of you are afraid to, and I'm not just talking naturally, spiritually to go out. Y'all want to, okay, I only could say hallelujah and sing in the church. But you only talk to God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's out of order. How that's out of order? God was with you Monday when you were asleep in that lawn, and he helped them eyes to open up to that lawn clock so you can go to work. God was with you Tuesday. When there were some robbers robbing um, the houses along your block, but they skipped your house. God was with you Wednesday when you was driving to work and you said something told you, but it was the Holy Spirit. And you took another route because if you went the regular route, you'd have been caught up in an accident that killed everybody, blew up the bridge and everything. God was with you Friday when your husband left. When you found his phone and he was cheating with the lady down the street and he stopped you from getting a gun and blowing him away so you wouldn't be locked up and the kids wouldn't have a mother nor for but then you don't want to and then saturday god was with you when he sends those to minister to you from your hurt and pain and stuff but you still ain't talking to god because you got it in your head because devil said that night you gotta go to church you gotta go to an organization and then you go to one that ain't even they up here profit line and you want to spew all of this out. And guess what? You don't you don't have the, the ability to discern the spirits rightly. And God would have loved to um, connect with you, but he don't even go up in that building. So guess what? You couldn't even meet him. You met a so-called representative because remember the devil dresses in sheep clothing. Yeah. Social media, we got to do better. Y'all leaders that claim to be leaders and you have organizations and platforms and, you know, you, you're out here evangelizing and trying to win souls. You better check the motives of your heart because guess what? God is opening up the eyes of people across the earth. The, he got his eyes is on the, the believers and the non-believers. And those of us that are asleep, he's opened, the eyes. he's opened everybody's eyes up. He has the heart of everyone in his hand. He's given us another opportunity, either you're going to accept him or not. He's going to put the truth in front of you. You're going to choose to believe him or believe the devil. Which one are you going to do? Which one are you going to do? We're going to come back and revisit this subtopic in reference to, uh, you know, will you allow others to face more than you can handle? Because some of you see people hurting and you don't do nothing to help them. Some of you have the answers. And here it is, a person to pour out to you and you, you can talk about you so quick to pass it to God. And here it is, you have power and authority. Someone tell you that they just short on money. You up here sitting on an extra fifty dollars, but you gonna say, you know, I'm just gonna pray about it. God gonna see you son. You pray. The baby is hungry now. Give that person that fifty dollars that's in your purse, so they can get a meal and eat. The help gonna come, and they leave out your present, and they still hungry. Shame on you. God frowns at that. And that's why he said you'll know them by their fruit.
Y'all pay attention. Pay attention to people, what they say, and if what they're saying and what they're doing. And then if you get to know them behind the scenes, if their lifestyle is not aligned up with even what they say, you better be where you better go talk to God because they could be the devil looking like God. Here it is. You met them and they you think they sounding all holy because they they memorizing scriptures and they up here shaking and shucking and bucking and trying to speak in tongues. And you're like, oh, they so powerful. But then behind the scenes, they live so wicked. They cuss out their family, kick the dog, smack the children around. They're just nasty. But then they get in front of you and in front of this platform, boy, they be looking woo, shiny and good. And you just think they just so holy. I told you the devil was amping it up. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I'm not sure. I got to look again. I will be coming back maybe in another two weeks. We'll revisit this. I'll make this subject a part two. Um because we have to really stay humble. And as Apostle Tybo first said, that is that is the top trait when correcting others as well as even ourselves. When you know you wrong, you gotta be humble with yourself. And then you have to be that big person, that big man, big woman too. If whatever the situation is, if you have an opportunity to correct it, just go ahead and correct it in love. Whether it's going to the person, but then also make it right so that if you have to repent from some ways in you, something that you did, Make sure you get rid of that so you won't have to keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. You know, it doesn't make any sense to keep trying to do things over and over again, thinking you're going to get a different result and you keep getting the same thing. And you're wasting time, the time that God give us. And time is something that we could never get back. Y'all got to be, y'all got to be wise about the time that y'all spend on these platforms and with these people. You know, yes, God wants us to follow. You want to follow with like believers. Some of y'all following with represent y'all up here fellowshipping with devils, the devil in disguise. They up here saying they love God and you just fall for it. You don't even check for their fruit. You don't check their fruit. You're not, you're not questioning, you're not asking the right questions. You're not asking any questions at all. You ain't even opening your mouth saying nothing. You're just going along with them. And don't you know that you're going to be held accountable when this life is over with? God going to say, okay, why was you up there with them? When I clearly was lead, when I clearly told you to do this. Amen. Again, join us. Let me see who's coming up next week. Because again, social media out there. So we are back. Soldiers on fire for Christ. Uh, we are back. Hold up. That's not it. We have been on rest month, but we are here. We are back. We have um, Bible study. Everything um, normally begins at 7 p.m. except for our panels discussion and um, the men and women panel discussion. Then we have the combined. But this month, it will be, here we go, it will be the combined men and women together that means i want we're going to send out invites to men and women you can come and join us on whatever the holy spirit feels led to talk about but it will be led by minister isaiah this month but come and join us again on october the 10th next thursday we the women here at soldiers on fire for christ we are taking over we done took over spiritually on the prayer call honey so and the men will come up in November. So it's a it's a spiritual women's takeover for the month of October. We ain't playing with no devils. We ain't getting no tricks. We ain't getting no treats. We ain't got time for it. We exposing everything. If it ain't a God is getting exposed, you don't like it, I'm sorry. You'll be all right. That's what God said. They be all right. Just say what I say. Do exactly what I do. So come and join us next week on the prayer line. You can come and look at any of our pages, Minister Rose Christine Jackson, Apostle Robin Riley, myself, Pastor Teresa Vini, Elder Bud Dillon, and Minister Isaiah. And if you know any of the members here, you and if they're advertising, you can look on our page and look on the group page, Soldiers on Fire for Christ, for all of this information. You can look for the um, prayer call number. The prayer call number that we have does not have a code, so that means you can call right in. So it's nothing that's going to stop you from not at least listening in on the prayer call next Thursday October the 10th at 7 p.m., which will be led by Minister Rose um, and however the Holy Spirit leads amongst us women on the prayer line. And then coming right behind her on Friday, October the 11th, Apostle Robin Riley will be your Bible study instructor. So you don't yes. want to miss, you don't want to miss, huh? And then I have Thursday night for the prayer line as well. So I'm back to back. 
Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. It sure was because y'all switched. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. I'm looking at the schedule. So it's going to be Apostle Robin this Thursday, um, October 10th, and she will be teaching October the 11th. So that is, there's no excuse. So you're getting double work just like today. But um, yes, please feel free to join us. And then right behind her, Minister Rose will be teaching on October the 12th. Amen. So I ain't going to say what that day is, but it's going to be a special day. I know I'm going to get delivered. On, I know I'm going to be set free from something on that day. God said it because I'm coming out of my year of Jubilee. So it's all right. Um, so please feel free to join us again on October the 10th on the prayer call at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Apostle Robin Riley will be your uh, prayer facilitator. And then she's going to come back on Friday, October the 11th. She will be your Bible study instructor right behind her on Saturday, October the 12th. Minister Rose Christine Jackson will be your Bible study instructor. And again, every fourth and fifth Tuesday of the month, we have meet and greet. We employ that you come out and meet us. We're not scared. We want to meet the people. Come on and fellowship with us. You know, and you can come online on Zoom from the comfort of your home, meet and greet the leadership team. Some of the, some of the members normally come in and partners on um the fourth and fifth Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And all you have to do is contact any of us via Facebook to give us your email. That's all we need. We don't need nothing else. We don't need all that. We just need your email. And you just put a reminder in your phone or whatever to join us, you know. And the link is normally sent out between 6.30 and 6.50. Uh, and then our sessions all start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. And again, for those of you out there that are viewing this, that may view this recording later, or um, to, again, we here at Soldiers on Fire for Christ, we are partnered with St. Jude to raise a million dollars for the children. Please partner and consider partnering with us to help us to meet that goal. And so you can go into the group. Minister Rose always has it pinned up and even on our personal pages to get the link. The link will open up to be a form that you have to complete. And it has many dollars. amount. You can give any amount that you choose. But I also need for people to give whatever they want to give to help us. But also share, share the link with other people, you know, spread the word. We at Soldiers on Fire for Christ don't get any money. When you click that link, everything goes to St. Jude. St. Jude is going to respond to you. Not Pastor Teresa, not Apostle Robin, not Minister Isaiah, not Elder Bud, and not Minister Rose. Ain't nobody applying. Responding back to you, thanking you for your donation. We don't even know what you're donating. I want you to go to the Lord and let the Lord move on your heart to help these children with me. Partner with us so we can meet this goal and be a, such a blessing to the, the ones that can't really help themselves. And they're not mentally or spiritually mature yet and we want them to whatever they the ailments of the body that they go through we don't want them to be worrying about that we don't want them to be worrying about you know necessities where here it is our donation will cover that we want them to focus on the spirit of the lord moving in the parents to help them and keeping them strong spiritually through this process or whatever may be going on with the children amen so please talk with the Lord and talk with yourself. And, and you know, we because we want cheerful give. We want you to give. We want you to give to the kids because you really want to help these kids to have a fighting chance to live as long as possible. I don't want nobody giving because you think in the past they're trying to beat you in the head to give or try to manipulate or make you feel bad because you're not giving. That's not my job. Holy Spirit, conv he'll convict your heart. He knows the motives better than any of us do. We don't have that type of time. So if your heart is wicked, he going to deal with it. But please talk with him and partner with us because we're trying to reach a million dollars. We are going to reach it, but I just want to reach it sooner instead of than later. Because the kids, they need this money now as soon as possible. Amen. And so with that all being said, Clear all hearts and minds and let us pray. Oh, thank you, Lord. Again, we come to you this evening, Lord God, thanking you for this word, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you for all that happened throughout this day, Lord God. And as we are about to leave this platform and rest for the evening, or all of us are in different states, so the time zones may be different, even for those that are viewing this recording, or they may view it later once it's posted, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, while they rest. 
help them to surrender their whole body, mind, their mind, body, and spirit unto you so that you can help them to remove anything in their mind and their spirit and their heart that is not pleasing in your sight. And even if there are people in their lives that is not pleasing in your sight, you will give them the strength and give them the right words to speak unto them to end the connection because they're not beneficial for their spirit and they're not beneficial for their life in the name of Jesus. Because God, if you give us one more day, we want to be better than we was today. And Lord, continue to forgive us for our sins, sins known and unknown. And we want to thank you always how you keep the angels you know, assigned all over the earth to protect all of us from seen and unforeseen dangers. So Lord, help us and continue to guide us through any problems that we may face and any decisions we have to make this day. Continue to put your super on everyone's natural and heal us in the area that we need to be healed. Put, Give us supernatural healing, Lord God, but also, Lord God, keep giving us the wisdom and the knowledge to take the medications or anything that we need to take to help. And Lord, I ask that you let any medications, any form of anything to help the flesh so that we can still be submissive unto you and transform to be all what you created us to be, Lord God. Continue to let it just be nourishment to the body without leaving any harsh elements in our bloodstream, colon, intestines, joints, or muscles in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord God, we're striving to preserve ourselves so that we can be strong workers and and, you know, laborers in the in the vineyard, in the field, Lord God, in the ministry field to help get these souls closer and get them unto you because we know that you desire to have a relationship with all your creation. But we thank you here at Soldiers on Fire for Christ, Lord God, for all that you've done and you do and you continue to do in and through us together and separately. So, Lord, have your way the rest of this evening with us and we surrender everything unto you, everyone that is connected to us, our households, you are welcome in it. And we just praise you and we just thank you. Thank you. It's not even a big enough word, but we just say it often, often because we truly mean it from the depth of our soul. Lord, thank you. Thank you for life and thank you for it abundantly. And we give you all the glory and honor for it right now in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. And everyone say amen. 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 Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. amen.